to talk a bit more about this, we're joined by Anne Dom, Deputy Director of Seas at Risk. Anne, thanks for your time today. It's a really stark warning issued there, the fact that it could be affecting human health, possibly even killing people, but we just mustn't get carried away. There's no direct evidence of that at this stage, is there? It is indeed a, a very stark warning, and it's not the only one we've received the last year. I think the last years we've seen an enormous buildup of, of evidence of the harm um, plastics can cause to the environment and to the oceans in particular. Now, indeed, as you mentioned, scientists are not uh, fully clear yet about the causal link between uh, plastic being everywhere uh, in, in our environment and the effect it can have on, on our health. But the warnings are there. This recent research has, has also emphasized this. Uh, the key issue is uh, it, it even goes beyond the human race. I think it, uh, research has made very clear that plastic is damaging and harmful uh, to marine life, for instance. Uh, the fact that fish and mammals and, and birds get entangled and killed uh, by, by plastics. The fact also that plankton is being shown to be eating um, microplastics. And, and, and that's the beginning of the food chain. The food ch chain that brings plastics from plastic from plankton to fish to our plates. Um, and in absence of the uh, complete scientific certainty, what that means in terms of bringing chemicals into our bodies, the, the warnings there are about endocrine disrupt disruptors uh, entering our bloodstreams that way. Uh, the only way to act is in a precaution way and, 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 to, and to prevent this happening. Are you confident the problem about... <laughs> sorry, sorry, Anne, I was just going to ask, are you confident yeah. about some of the steps that are being taken? I'm thinking about some of, some of the legislation brought in by the European Union. Is it enough? Or because of the way the oceans move, does it need to be a global, at, almost at the same time, effort? On the one hand, I'm very hopeful. CZ Risk has been working for more than eight years on this topic, and it's especially the last year that we have seen an enormous momentum in attention that this to topic is uh, getting from the media, but also from civil society, and also in attention it is getting on the political agenda at the United Nations level, at European uh, Union level, and many countries. So that, that really uh, gives hope. Um, in the European Union, for instance, the, the European Commission has just uh, proposed new legislation which would actually ban certain single-use products uh, like uh, uh, cotton buds, which you find so, so often on the beaches, and, and cutlery and, and plastic plates, all, all these plastics that are actually not really needed to make our life comfortable and which we throw away after just using for some minutes uh, without thinking of, about the, the impact this would, would cause. So I, I think that that inspires confidence that at least uh, uh, there is a shift happening in the mindset about the use of plastics. Of course, these are uh, quick wins. These are short-term solutions which focus very much on, on the products and the way they are produced. Uh, of course, much more needs to be done because the root of uh, the root cause of all this problem is, of course, to be found deeper in the in the economy and in society, and and basically in in the way in which during the last 50 years we have worked very hard at building up a throwaway uh, society and changing that will need more steps than than what is uh, being done now, and will lead uh, very much a political will. And also the citizens will, because it's also the choice of each of us, the choices we make every day with our wallets in the shop, where we can choose the products uh, that are, have less plastics. That's less important. Indeed. And thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for thoughts today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you.